next edition of the Fortner Report, the wrap-up of the coolest stuff at NAMM 2011. Um, first on the list is the Tempest Drum Machine, which is an analog drum machine with a built-in sequencer designed by Dave Smith and Roger Lynn. Um, all I can really say about this is you want old school, you got it. So go check it out at davesmithinstruments.com. Um, it's not cheap. I think it goes out the door for about two grand. Um, but we have videos of it on keyboardmag.com right now. And um, you can just really see how fat and nasty and janky it sounds. It's, uh, it's very, very cool. And speaking of old school and fat and nasty and janky, if you go downstairs into Hall E in them, okay, and, and just show you, just give you a little layout, a little lay of the land here. The Anaheim Convention Center, where NAMM is held every year, it's across the world from, uh, across the street from Disney World, rather, where we uh, are now. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't make this stuff up. Um, so the Anaheim Convention Center, there is this round thing on the end called the arena, and it's a big round room, and there's a big square hall, so it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a spaceship from Battlestar Galactica. And then there's the basement, there's the dungeon of the spaceship that we call Hall E, the island of misfit toys. And down in Hall E, there is a 30, 30th anniversary reissue of the Fairlight CMI. Um... It, it's a Fairlight. It has a green screen with a light pen interface. It makes all the sounds the Fairlight made. It has the page R sequencing interface. And it does a few more things and makes a few more high resolution sounds than the Fairlight did. And um, it also costs a lot less than the original Fairlight did. It's only $17,000. So if you are a nostalgia freak and you have time and money on your hands, um, go check it out. If you have a whole lot less money, I would recommend that you go check out the Casio WK7500, which is a workstation that includes drawbar modeling. Um, it records to an SD card. Uh, it has a 16-track um, sequencer with a 17th track that can handle multi-part drum arrangements. So you can get a total of 32 multi multi tambour parts. parts excuse me. Um, and everything you're doing, playing, singing, moving drawbars, playing Hammond sounds, kicking in a Leslie simulator, you can all record that in real time to an SD card, and then pop the SD card um, into your computer and download the WAV file and master it. Um, that workstation from Casio, the WK7500, uh, streets for four ninety nine. Okay, moving over to boutique analog synths. There's a company called Dewanatron. D e w a n a t r o n dot com. And Duanatron makes these synths called the Swarmatron and the Melody Gen. And um, you just just go to the website. They're, they're these steampunk looking, it's like half from a Thomas Dolby video and half from a Hayao Miyazaki film like Howl's Moving Castle. Um, they make these wonderful random patterns. They're not just contro uh, CD controllers, they're self contained analog synthesizers. Um, one of them has a dual ribbon interface, but the ribbons are these strips of leather with a metal ribbon under them that you press down onto another contact panel. And what you can do is you can do them in opposite directions, and as the guy explained them, you can taffy pull chords, multiple pitches, polyphonic chordamento. I mean, it's 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 the synth out of a Hayao Miyazaki film. It's, it, it's really the only way I can describe it. Um, in, in, in more practical matters, um, Motu gave us a technology preview of Mach 5.3, uh, their soft sampler. It's kind of their answer to Native Instruments contact. And um, it has um, gigabytes and gigabytes of samples in it. And each category of instrument, be it grand piano, you know, uh, guitar, upright bass, uh, vintage keys, string section, and so forth, has a whole lot of scripting going on. And what they do with the scripting is uh, they give you a graphical display that looks like it's a soft synth. But it's not a standalone soft synth, it's just a preset inside a soft sampler. Um, so on the upright bass, you have three different mics you can move around. 
on the guitar. There's different cording and strumming modes that you can go into to play like a keyboardist and think like a keyboardist with sound, like a guitarist. It'll revoice the chords for you. It'll do up, down, up strums and down strums alternately, things like that. Um, on you know the drum kit, there's um, three or four mics for each different drum, and there's this cool little mixer where you can mix them together. Um, and the cool thing about Mach 5 is that with each instrument type, you get just enough mic positions, um, just enough parameters to play with to inspire you to get a musical sound, but not so many parameters to play with that you're sitting there tweaking parameters all day and going, okay, how do I want to balance my overheads in relation to my top snare mic, in relation to my bottom snare mic, in relation to my you know stereo close mics? You know, you're not playing with parameters so much that you're like, you know, worried you're not getting the best possible sound, right? Um, there's just enough to get you going and actually playing music, and, and that's what it's all about. We got the Mach 5 3. We also saw Synthogy Ivory 2, uh, which kicks up Ivory's kind of gold standard virtual grand piano with um, uh, sustain resonance, sympathetic string resonance, uh, half pedaling, all these things that serious piano snobs want in a 77.2 gigabyte piano library, and you can, uh, which includes a Steinway, a Bosendorfer, and a Yamaha C7 emulation, and to that you can add uh, the Italian Grand. They call it the Italian Grand because they can't say Bazzioli, because I can. Thank you, Freedom of the Press. Um, and this is the most beautiful, musical, dynamic, and just naturally playable uh, software grand piano that uh, I've ever had the privilege to play. Synthogy Ivory 2. Joe Iorardi, been with Kurzweil forever. Brains behind Synthogy now. Check that out. We were uh, just at dinner with the folks from Universal Audio. And um, Universal Audio, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, up the U8A1 platform to the U8A2 platform. Uh, so you can now have up to four processors on a card. And they just released the um, satellite system. So um, you remember you had the UAD-1 expander, which was a little silver box that hooked to your, your, your laptop via Firewire, had a UAD-1 card inside it. Well, you have kind of the same idea, only for the UAD-2. And you have dual processor and quad processor options in a cool little stainless steel silver box. Um, the only thing that it doesn't do is that it's not bus-powered. Um, but you hook this up to your iMac or MacBook Pro, and, you know, you get the quad version, and you have scads and scads of processing power to run the best analog emulation in the business. I'm talking about things like Uri 1176s, Teletronics LA-2As, Helios and Neve channel strips, old Roland Space Echoes. I mean, the stuff, like, if you go on eBay, it's five or ten grand if you can find it. Um, and the reason that Universal Audio is so good at emulating all this stuff in software is that they also make it in hardware. They have this analog side of the company. Uh, where they make almost, you know, part for part, discrete circuitry replicas of things like 11, 1176s and LA-2As and classic microphone preamps. Uh, so, you know, if you get the full-on tricked-out version, you might spend two grand, but you're going to have a famous producer's worth of stuff inside your laptop. Um, so... It's been in a PCI card format, but if you don't have a tower system, you just have a little MacBook Pro or something, there's the standalone Fireware box down from Universal Audio. And I just want to say one more thing about Universal Audio, um, which is that if you do a little bit of walking around a NAMM show, it's, it doesn't take too much to see that the musical instrument and pro audio industry is a cutthroat industry. Everybody's trying to make something cheaper. Everybody is trying to design something to a price point, and sometimes it can kind of feel like a race to the bottom. Well, Universal Audio is a company that is based in Santa Cruz, California. Um, they are all about making it in the USA. They are all about product quality, good corporate citizenship, and treating their employees well. And if I had to make an analogy to another corporation, they'd be like Ben and Jerry's back in the day. They're the Ben and Jerry's at Pro Audio. So you can feel good about buying stuff from them for two reasons. Because they're really good people, and because they make really good stuff. So check out the Universal Audio UAD2, UAD2 satellite system. And um, that's the uh, NAM wrap-up for uh, Saturday night, January 15th, 2011.